And welcome back to the show. Let's go back to the Hoosier State, where state leaders of Congress, both Republicans, mind you, announcing today a quote-unquote fix to this religious freedom law we've been hearing so much about this week. And this would prevent businesses from denying services to gays or lesbians. Here is Indiana Speaker of the House, Brian Bosma. What was intended as a message of inclusion, inclusion of all religious beliefs, was interpreted as a message of exclusion, especially for the LGBT community. Nothing could have been truer from, or further from the truth, but it was clear that the perception had to be addressed. Well, some social conservatives thought it did not have to be addressed, but I digress. We're pleased to tell you today that at 9.30 we'll be presenting what we believe is a very strong statement to assure that every Hoosier's rights are protected and won't be infringed upon by the enactment of RIFRA. Now, pressure from the LGBT community, as well as some in the business community and even other state governors, led the walk back of the law. But in its wake, some businesses in Indiana feel their rights have been violated. If a gay couple was to come in, like say we wanted, they wanted us to provide them pizzas for a wedding, um, we would have to say no. But Memory's pizza owner, Crystal O'Connor, who you just saw, doesn't believe she is discriminating against gays. We're not discriminating against anyone. It's just that's our belief. And everybody has the right to believe anything. Okay, so the owner of the shop did say that she would never refuse service to a gay couple. They just wouldn't cater a gay wedding. Who has their wedding catered by a pizza shop anyway because it's genius, Brad? <laughs> They're always serving the chicken and the bad fish and steak, but it's really yeah, a flank pizza. steak. And that's you never get a craving for a piece of chicken. That's pizza, right. I understand. Yeah, so if I had to go back and do it again 26 years, maybe. I want to ask a serious question, though, here. Because we all laughed. Is it possible that a person in good conscience really can say, of course I would serve a gay couple. They can come in holding hands. They can kiss in the booth. I would serve them but I don't want to participate in possible. their wedding. Absolutely, it's possible. And we are no closer on right. either side to being able to appreciate that. We throw our own words like include and exclude and rights and that. She can't even say, you're right, I am discriminating. Including my views will necessarily exclude others. How are we gonna work that out in this country? This is what has made this issue so compelling and so interesting for so long now. Both sides of this argument are right. Yes. Exactly. They are both right. Nobody should be discriminated against and nobody should have their religious beliefs compromised. Both sides are right. So what do you do when both uh, sides are right? There's, there's two things about that. One is I went back last night and looked at some of the Supreme Court cases on this and they do differentiate between belief and action. Cool. So you can have your belief but when you take action that infringes on other people's rights, you lose. No, I so understand. But that doesn't change, you're right, but it doesn't the change the reality us with the bind with the that problem, we're trying to with cover the multiply It doesn't make you a bad person needs. if but you they, have a religious belief. They, right? sort of, they sort of did it in Utah. So in Utah, they were going to pass a similar law, and then they got together, and the Church of the Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints yeah. sat down with members of the we, LGBT... We call them Mormons. Yes. yes. Sat down with the members of the LGBT community, and they talked, and they negotiated, and they came up with a deal that both protects right. the, the discrimination and makes what religious accommodation. That's the key. We've what got to have conversation concept. ahead of legislation. If we don't, we're just going to get pointless, expensive, right. mean-spirited litigation. And here's where the conversation has gone in the case of that particular pizza place. That woman has received death threats, multiple, yes. on social media, people calling the pizza place. God forbid, pun intended, you actually disagree in this case and you're just exercising your religious beliefs Ridiculous. because if you do, the mob will come after you. And it is the mob. Absolutely. The Ridiculous. sanctimony of the people who oppose her is no less intense than what she's being accused of. That's, That's right. the irony here. Right. We've got two sides that talk with absolute certainty about what by definition no one can be certain about. If we could bring back a little humility, which last time I checked is a serious religious principle, no matter you're a progressive or traditionalist, it's a serious religious category. How do you do advocacy? How do you have passionate views and still have a little humility? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in one more thing, and you know, I've largely taken the side of the LGBT community in this, but, you know, they have advanced as they should have advanced, and they've advanced because they asked for and they're getting tolerance, which they clearly deserve. 
well, you know, when you're getting tolerance, why don't you express a little tolerance? Right. Yeah. Right. You know? right. yeah I, I think that they feel that they're in a position that they can't afford to, and I think that's I wrong. I think that's right. I, but I, but I think that's wrong. I wonder how much of this. Is, well, I wonder. I know how much of this is political. You know what I got a kick out of? Andrew Cuomo, the Democratic New York State Governor, who says. I'm banning all non-essential travel to Indiana. So let's say I went to Duke, and that would never happen, but let's say I went to Duke and I want to see the Final Four this weekend in Indianapolis. That's essential. That's essential? Well, that's that's, that's, that's yeah. defining essential. Yeah. So that you can go. Right. But you're right. All these bannings back and forth. Work. You punish people. You have no idea who you're punishing. It's posturing. And posturing with other people's lives is a very bad practice. Agreed. I'm sorry, Rick, you were saying... I said you, you were, you're not a state employee, so he, he, Andrew Cuomo couldn't tell you and I that we can't go. Right, but even state employees know, that may I have know. gone to Kentucky or whatever, just the exploitation. We'll get emails. Andrew we Cuomo's will. a dictator. Potluck time next. This is The Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax. <laughs>